from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Welcome to a special presentation of Joe Eater's 2017 Olympia Weekend. Dan Solomon along with Carla Sanchez, and we're gonna get the night started. And oh, what a big night it is in the world of physique competition. Wow, this is an incredible weekend for these athletes and for the fans of bodybuilding. Well, we're crowning a lot of champions throughout a lot of divisions over the course of these two nights. Now, of course, tonight, the highly anticipated Mr. Olympia contest, uh, the reigning champion, Phil Heath, comes in a year ago tonight. He won this contest for the sixth time, equaling the mark of Dorian Yates. If he's able to win tonight, it would be Mr. Olympia title number seven, which would equal the mark of Arnold Schwarzenegger, leaving him just one shy of that very meaningful mark in the world of bodybuilding. Right. Eight Olympia titles won by both Ronnie Coleman and Lee Haney. But, you know, Carl, I got to ask you, this event has grown into something remarkable. It's it just, it's quite a showcase. It's electrifying. This is amazing. This is the weekend that, you know, we all, we all wait for, and this was exciting. So we've got something in store tonight. You guys don't want to miss this. All right. The 2017 Olympia finals is about to get underway. Famer, Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, German We're going to go ahead and first CEO hear from the, Mr. the CEO of American Media, of course, the entity that owns the Mr. Mr. Olympia the contest. So let's hear from David. Olympia. This year marks a major milestone for me. It has been 15 years since I began working with Joe and Ben Weider and what has become the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. During this time, we increased the prize money by 150% to over $1.3 million. Most important, this year's increase gives the women's division parity with their counterparts on the men's side. And I'm proud to say it's about time. I am very happy to tell you that this month, American media became the sole owner of Mr. Olympia. The last 90 days have been quite exciting for American media. Besides acquiring all of Mr. Olympia and the Fitness and Performance Expo, we purchased Us Weekly, the largest celebrity magazine in the United States for $100 million. We also acquired Men's Journal Magazine and decided to merge it with Men's Fitness, beginning with the November issue. Finally, I'm excited to announce my presidential appointment as a senior member of the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. All of these acquisitions and strategies, Mr. Olympia, Us Weekly, Men's Journal, and the President's Council, will impact everyone here tonight. Now, let's look at what this year's Olympia has in store for you. At tonight's main event, Phil Heath will go for his seventh Olympia title, attempting to match the legendary Arnold Schwarzenegger's record. Finally, for anyone who doesn't believe bodybuilding is a growing sport, just check out who our sole sponsor is this year. We also have a very special guest here with us tonight. I think many of you may have heard of him. When he joins me on stage later this evening, DJ will tell you about a documentary he is producing on this year's Olympia. God bless you all. Bob, let's get the show started. The road to greatness starts now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, bodybuilding fans from around the world, welcome to the 2017 Olympia. Folks, we've got a great show lined up for you here tonight. We're going to get right to it. Phil Heath looking for number seven right here on this stage. Can he make history? And can he match the great Arnold Schwarzenegger? Folks, we've nailed it down to our top 10 for tonight. 
Our top 10 are in the back and ready. The judges see them in place. Fans here at the Olympia, are you ready? Please welcome your first competitor from Curacao, the Beast, Ruli Winkler. All right, our 2017 Olympia Finals is now underway as Ruli Winkler, by way of Curacao, makes his way to the stage. He's had a, uh, a fairly quiet year after a busy one a year ago where he competed eight times. And uh, Ruli, of course, uh, showcases some of those historically spectacular arms. And uh, he's really done a great job of becoming a real big star here in Las Vegas, Sean, each year come Olympia time. Well, Dan, like I said from a day ago, 24 hours later, we could be looking at a totally different bodybuilder, which at first blush, that's exactly what I see. I see a roller wrinkle that's a little bit closer to where he should have been yesterday, so he did definitely make up ground. One of the real challenges for a guy like Willie Winkler is we are now in an era where the top guys are named Phil Heath and Dexter Jackson and Sean Roden. They are of the more aesthetic variety. And when a guy like Willie Winkler shows up, now granted, Big Rami, and we're going to talk about him later, he's managed to pull it off, but he's got a better flow, a different type of structure. With Willie, it's really hard for him to compare with guys like Heath and, and, and the other more aesthetically guys. Now he's not a genetic freak. Uh, he's got body parts. And when thrown together, you can see there's a little bit of blockiness in the way the, cat, the uh, thighs are shaped. Uh, he's got those massive arms that overpower the majority of his physique. It doesn't flow on an aesthetic basis, but really by himself is a freak. And when he picks the right show, he wins. That's how he got here. Well, we're going to get our first look from the United at, uh, Kingdom. Please welcome Nathan. Diasha. Okay, Nathan Diasha, one of the rising stars in the world of professional bodybuilding, competing in the Olympia for the second time. Um, he was 12th here a year ago, a former British champion. And uh, Sean Ray, a lot of people really like what they're seeing from Nathan Diasha. Yeah, he's got a lot of potential. And uh, it, it's a diamond in the rough. The lats are a little bit high. The waist is a little bit long. Uh, again, this is his second Olympia, so there's a lot of things that he's going to have to learn along the way, and we're going to see those weaknesses here on the biggest stage, but again, he's a, a guy that when he picks the right show, he winds up in that victory circle, and right now, this is a contest where I talked to him after prejudging yesterday, that he is just ecstatic because no matter what happens here, he's done better than he did a year ago. got no shortage of biceps, he's got plenty of shoulders, and uh, he's got a nice thick quad sweep. He is the number one British bodybuilder, uh, in, if you discount James Flex Lewis, who's from Wales. This guy right now is representing the UK uh, very well. Well, it's, um, it's been fun watching the cultural component of this weekend. There are elite world-class athletes representing you know, 25 countries or so over the course of the weekend. So it's um, it's a real international showcase here in Las Vegas. Please welcome from the USA, Flexitron Sean Roden. Well, here he is, your 2009 North American champ. That was a long time ago, but five years in a row now. He's been a top four finisher here at the Mr. Olympia contest. And only a year ago, he was the runner-up here. Yeah, and I said a year ago, he's one of the more quiet first runner-ups. Not a lot of fuss was being made about the fact that Sean Roden had taken out Dexter Jackson, Big Rami, and the likes. Uh, this is the former Arnold Classic Europe champion. Sean didn't just fall into first place. He's been a work in progress. This is a guy who is, um, presents his physique in a very artistic way. And what we're going to do now is we're going to sit back and let you watch uh, the posing routine of last year's Olympia runner-up, Sean Roden. But I gotta be honest with you, we're, we're seeing some things right now that I don't know that I've seen on a bodybuilder. Well, I did. I'm, Kai Green is one of those guys that, uh, he, he's a performer and stole some moves from Chris Dickerson. And of course, I combined some things from the Brada and Bob uh, Paris back in the day. Sean is, is taking a lot of liberties to use the guys that came before him. 
very slow, mellow uh, person, and he poses the same one. And he's made some improvements. We talked about wanting to improve the hamstrings, and the has done that. It's really the upper back density and the detail. That's the area that he's needed to improve to kind of take that next step. And the question is, has he done that? Well, it's not just the back. I mean, he, the triceps are very slight, and the thighs at times are very soft and smooth. There's a few things. He relaxes his stomach a little bit more than I'd like him to see. Uh, on, on this stage, this is where you got to very stay in very strong control and keep it tight at all times. But I got to give it to him that he did dry up from a day ago. And again, when you pose like you pose like this, it makes your muscles more controlled and helps them get more separated. I mean, we reach the end of the night, but uh, you know, you just got to really. It, it's being as good for as long as he has is, is one of the Thank hardest things to do. And, uh, you just got to tip your cap to what Sean Roden has been able to bring at this level year in and year out. Please welcome your next competitor from Down Under, the King of the Gym, Josh Lenardowitz. All right, the pride of Australia is gonna walk onto the stage right now. From the, uh, emerge from the smoke is Josh Lenardowitz. He has three pro wins already to his credit. He won just a month ago in Tampa, Florida. He's a lot softer than he was in Tampa, Florida. Uh, we've seen him better, but even when he's off, he's one of the top 10 physiques in the world, which tells you a little bit about this guy's potential, especially when he's 100% mentally focused along with being physically prepared. In spite of everything he's gone through, when you look at this guy's proportions, his structure, you can see why this guy has superstar written all over him. He's got a great look, great stage presence. He's extremely popular, not just in Australia, but throughout the entire world. Absolutely, and, and you know what? In spite of the soft, thin layer of water that's you know conjugated around the hamstrings and the glutes in the back, you can clearly see that the muscle is underneath there. Uh, he's got to be in much better condition on a show of this caliber but the shape is there. Of course, the knock on Josh is the chest. There's a little bit of a genetic a disposition there with his chest being a little bit more separated than some of the genetic freaks are. This is a physique in the right show that can take out some very good bodybuilders. And a year ago, this guy competed in a lot of contests. So I'm very surprised that he's able to show up here and look as good as he does. Give it up for Josh Lenardowitz. Well, you know, the, the storyline of Dallas Your McCarver uh, continues to sort of cast a cloud over this weekend, Big and we're going to talk Cedric. more about that uh, as our production goes on, because it's a... It's a and here's Cedric trying to represent. And this is a guy, Dan, that Arnold Schwarzenegger was saying that if we were looking for an ideal physique that embodies what a bodybuilder should look like, perform like, and even behave like, Cedric McMillan fit the bill as far as Arnold Schwarzenegger was concerned. So let's sit back and watch Cedric's routine because Cedric has quickly become one of the more popular guys in the sport, somebody who we really enjoy covering and uh, somebody who has a whole lot of fun and also keeps great perspective about all of this. So uh, let's, uh, let's watch Cedric. can't ignore the glimpses of possibilities. I mean, this guy on this stage, if he did it all in one night, he could take out a guy like Phil Heath. He could be the big Rami and a William Bonek because he's just a genetically blessed bodybuilder. And we've seen lots of bodybuilders, Dan, Matt Mendenhall, Roy Lutemeyer back in the day. They were blessed with the great genetics but could never dial it in on the big stage. Cedric may still have some time to do that, but it won't happen here this week. There is no question in my mind that this is one of the more enjoyable bodybuilders as to cover. And we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and we're going to continue our coverage here from Las Vegas of Joe Eater's 2017 Olympia Weekend. Welcome to the biggest freak show on earth. Everyone here has the same goals that I do. So I'm happy, I'm excited. There's more to Olympia Weekend than the competitions staged at the Orleans Arena. Each year, the Las Vegas Convention Center plays host to the Olympia Expo, two days of events, appearances, and vendor booths that sees over 60,000 fans on Friday and Saturday. It's basically one giant playground for fitness enthusiasts. The Expo also plays host to several competitions. 
from the Olympia men's and women's physique divisions to a wide range of physical challenges for all attendees to try. Fans come from all over the world. Australia, Finland, Arizona, in the UK, Atlanta, Miami, Hawaii, Chicago, Mexico, Germany, New York City, LA, to sample the latest supplements, workout equipment, and emerging technologies, and to meet the biggest stars in bodybuilding and fitness. It's a dream come true to shake hands and take a selfie with your hero. I just simply a big fan. And maybe even get some personal advice. Just had a chance to spend some time with the gift, Phil Heath. It was absolutely awesome. Flex Lewis has probably been one of my biggest inspirations in bodybuilding. We love Nicole, love to watch her, she's spunky. The memories of these moments will inspire long after the Olympia weekend is over. Every year, the Olympia Expo exceeds the prior one in attendance and excitement, with 2017 being no exception, which means you definitely don't want to miss the 2018 Olympia Expo right here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. So I love the vibe, I love the people, and this is what I do. All right, we're back for our ongoing and very exclusive coverage here from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. You're watching Amazon Sports Nutrition's presentation of Joe Weider's Olympia Fitness and Performance Weekend. And one of the more anticipated moments of the night is our chance to get a look at Mamdou Alzbaye. They call him Big Rami, and he is big indeed. And Sean Ray, he has come here to Las Vegas this year. And let's uh, not mince words, he means business. Absolutely, we saw this guy last time winning out in Kuwait, he's arrived. As far as I'm concerned, it's the best he's been on this Olympia stage, and he's gonna be looking for his just desserts by the time this night is over. Well, there's certainly no denying, as you just mentioned, this is the best version of Big Rami we have ever seen. When you start talking about the comparison between Phil Heath, it's gonna open up a whole whirlwind of controversy when this event is over, regardless of who wins it. The delts, the quads, the small waist, the abs, the pecs. I mean, Rami has done his business, and not to be outdone, he was working with legendary trainer, big Chris Cormier, who's big Rami right now is starting to feel a little bit more confidence as he hears the remarks from last night. And you're seeing, and they love him here in the U.S., they love him in Vegas, and this is the guy who has started to develop that swagger. He showed up here a couple years ago, he was a little timid. It wasn't the same guy that you're seeing tonight. He's here to take this title. He feels like he's done the work. Based on the crowd response, I think there's a few people in this building that might think that uh, it's the outcome that could play out. And that standout trophy has traveled around the world. Of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger representing Austria, Sergio Oliva, Cuba, Franco Colombo, Italy, Dorian Yates from England. This would be a big feather in his cap if he could take this trophy back to Kuwait. Your next finalist from the USA, Brandon Curry. Well, you're looking really at one of bodybuilding's hottest properties, and it's kind of fallen a little bit under the radar when we start talking about all these other big names, but Brandon Curry's competed twice this year. He won both times, including the Arnold Classic Australia. His momentum is off the charts, and he comes in here to Las Vegas as a guy with a legitimate chance to secure a spot in the top five. Dan, they call this guy the prodigy. He won the overall USA Championships, which Brandon's always been slightly top heavy. The wide shoulders, the big arms, don't always match up with the legs, which have been slight, but he's brought the legs up, and he's been rewarded for that. But of course, he can always use a little bit more on the lower half. This guy's 252 pounds at all of five foot six, five foot seven. You know, the experts really feel that this is a guy who's got the goods, or at least had the goods early on, and for a while there he started to lose some steam. We were questioning whether or not it was gonna play out, and it took a little while, and he seemed to have figured Right out. now, he's starting, like Rami, to feel the confidence of the work that he's put in when no one else was looking. You cannot deny that Brandon Curry is one of the top 10 physiques on the planet today. Give it up for the prodigy, Brandon Curry. All right, Sean, you know, we're getting to look at a lot of these guys right now, and you just can really appreciate the overall quality. Uh, Brandon looked great. Um, Rami probably is the best Your he's ever been. Finalist. But across the board, we're trying Robin to figure out who really brought it William at the highest level, Bonin. because we often say when an Olympia is over, um, which one of the guys really showed their all-time best? This guy right here, for him, I would venture to say that his coach, Neil Hill, 
and him, William Bonek from the Netherlands, feel like they brought their absolute best. And William's got confidence, Dan. He's actually beaten Sean Roden. He's actually beaten Big Rami. So he is not afraid to get up here and show his best against the world's best. He was the story of last year's Olympia. And he now has uh, six professional wins to his credit. But when he landed in the top five here a year ago, no one saw it coming. But right now, William Bonick is here and he's arrived. You know, it's great because we're starting to see the emergence of guys that really weren't on that top tier radar a couple years ago. And, but it's really important for this sport for guys like uh, you know Brandon and, and, and William Bonac to come in to, Olymp to the Olympia and to do it on this stage and to do it at a high level because not everybody can do it when the lights are shining the brightest. Absolutely, and while I think William has improved, he still just needs to open up a little bit big. Okay. And I'd like to see William open up a little bit more. He likes to do the most muscular shots to show off the muscularity, but he's gotta think big, think wide, and show off his physique a little bit more because he does tend to look a little bit smaller when he's not all the way opened up in the poses. Well, everyone brings a different flavor to their posing routines, and uh, William Bonac is starting to get these, this crowd going. But uh, you know, it's really important because a lot of folks like the classic physique, but we're trying to, we're trying to entertain, we're trying to get these people going, and we're trying to create some real entertainment value. So um, that's the cool part about the Olympia, is that you see every type of style. Your next um, competitor from the USA, former Mr. Olympia, we'll talk about the Dexter. Blade, Dexter Jackson. Well, here he is. I mean, this is the most decorated bodybuilder in the history of the sport. He has been victorious 28 times, the winningest bodybuilder of all time they call him the blade dexter jackson and uh, as bob chicarilla mentioned he is a former mr olympia champion amazingly enough it was nine years ago that he was crowned mr olympia on this stage in the nearly 48-year-old former Mr. Olympia. Your final competitor is your six-time reigning and defending Olympia champion, the gift, Phil He. All right, Dan Solomon along with Sean Ray, and we are watching the number one bodybuilder on the planet, Phil Heath, a six-time Mr. Olympia champion, makes his way to the stage for the first time tonight. He debuted all the way back in 2006. And since then, he has gone on to have an extraordinary career. Tonight, he looks for Olympia win number seven. And Sean Ray, if he is able to do that, we will have to say move over Arnold Schwarzenegger. You've got company. So I'm going to ask you, Sean Ray, how do you feel about this year's strategy in 2017? Well, it's clearly working. I mean, this Phil is in the hunt. I mean, this is Phil's show. Right. I don't know where you pick apart Phil Heath. You may talk about not having control over his stomach throughout his routine, but when you turn around to the rear, we're talking half the body. Look at the hamstrings, the glutes, the crevasses through the traps and the deltoids. When he stands next to Big Rami, Rami's gonna have to have an answer for that. And if he doesn't, Phil's walking off number seven. I mean, at the end of the day, this is Mr. Olympia we're looking at right now. Until he stands next to Rami, 
for the second round of comparisons. Uh, that's where the rubber meets the rose, and that's where all the questions will be answered. Because right now, Dan, I'm looking at a two-man show. We have Bonick as good as he is. I'm not sure he's big enough to take on the beast from the east. But Phil is looking like Mr. Olympia. The question is, how will he look standing next to Rami 24 hours from yesterday? Well, there he is, Phil the Gift. He's, he comes to us from Colorado, and he's looking for number seven. This next gentleman is calling it a career, and he wanted to end it right here in front of you fans in Las Vegas, right here, center Olympia stage. Please welcome world's strongest bodybuilder, Johnny O. Jackson. Well, Sean, I'm really pleased that they're bringing Johnny out because initially I thought he was gonna come out earlier. It turns out they're gonna put him out right now. He's 46 years old, a former national champion, 16th year as a pro. This is his 13th Mr. Olympia. And as Bob Ciccarello just mentioned, we are gonna get what appears to be, based on what Johnny has announced, his final appearance here at the Mr. Olympia. And this will be the final routine that we will see here in the Mr. Olympia portion of the event. Typically, it would end with the defending champion, Phil Heath. They have brought Johnny Jackson out. He is not a top 10 finisher to give him one final chance to uh, perform for his bodybuilding fans. Well, Dan, as a side note, I want to give a special shout out to Johnny Jackson, husband and a father, contest promoter, lifelong career bodybuilder. Dan was right, this is one of the world's strongest bodybuilders right there with Ronnie Coleman. All right, we're back in just a moment after a quick break. You're watching Amazon Sports Nutrition's presentation of Joe Eater's right, Olympia Johnny Weekend. Next. While the Olympia Weekend started out 53 years ago as a single bodybuilding contest, today it features eight divisions, four for men and four for women, each with its own set of judging criteria and athletes, but all contested at the very highest levels of competition. The men's physique division features guys who aren't as large as pro bodybuilders, but who've honed their physiques to exacting proportions, similar to those of bodybuilders of the 1960s and 70s, but with greater definition and detail. In a hotly contested battle, Andre Ferguson finishes in the runner-up spot as Jeremy Buendia once again displays the perfect package to take his fourth consecutive men's physique Olympia title. Now in its fifth year at the Olympia, women's physique features the most muscular women of the four Olympia women's divisions. Jennifer Taylor comes in second place to four-time champion Brazil's Juliana Malacarne. The men's classic physique division is being contested for the second year at the Olympia. Classic physique is a hybrid of men's physique and bodybuilding. It features more streamlined bodies displayed by way of posing routines, like those of the bodybuilding divisions. Chris Bumstead finishes in the runner-up spot, with Breon Ansley becoming this year's new Olympia Classic Physique Champion. The fitness division is the most dynamic of Olympia competitions, with competitors performing choreographed routines that highlight their strength, agility, flexibility, and showmanship, while also being judged on their physiques. Veteran competitor Miriam Capes takes the runner-up spot to perennial showstopper Oksana Grishina, now a four-time Fitness Olympia winner. The Bikini Olympia was wide open, as defending champion Courtney King did not compete. Jennifer Ronziti finishes in second, while last year's runner-up Angelica Tasheda moves up one spot to become the new Bikini Olympia champ. The Olympia figure division is contested by women who are more muscular than the bikini competitors, but less so than the women's physique competitors. Two-time defending champion Latoya Watts moves down a spot to second. Sydney Gillen, who placed third year last year, leapfrogs to first and is now the reigning figure Olympia champion. For bodybuilding fans, the two most anticipated events are the 212 Olympia and, of course, the Mr. Olympia competition itself. Competitors in both divisions take the Orleans Arena stage on Friday in what's called the pre-judging. It's the first chance judges and fans get to see the athletes as they go through a series of rounds to assess their size, shape, definition, and overall muscularity. Contestants in the 212 Olympia must clock in at under 212 pounds at an official weigh-in the Wednesday evening before the competition. 
James Flex Lewis has won this event every year since the division limit was increased from 202 pounds to 212 pounds in 2012. But the question on everyone's minds is whether he can make it six in a row. In a repeat of last year, Ahmad Ashkenadi comes in second. And once again, the Welsh dragon, James Flex Lewis, retains his title to make him a six-time Olympia 212 champion. Congratulations, Flex. And now it's time for the big boys, the Mr. Olympia competitors. In its 53-year history, only 13 men have won the Olympia title, with defending champ Phil Heath owning six coveted Sandow trophies. Can he make it seven in a row, tying him with bodybuilding legend Arnold Schwarzenegger for second on the all-time wins list? He's facing his toughest challenge today in the form of massive 300-pound Mamdu Big Rami Elsbier, plus last year's runner-up Sean Roden, and third place finisher Dexter Jackson, Roly Winkler, William Bonac, and 12 more of the biggest, baddest, most ripped men on the planet as the 2017 Mr. Olympia competition begins now. All right, we're back here in Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena for Amazon Sports Nutrition's presentation of Joe Eater's Olympia weekend. I want to welcome everybody who's watching on Amazon Prime Video. Dan Solomon along with Sean Ray, Carlos Sanchez will join us. And now head judge Steve Weinberger is going to step in and uh, take these guys through a series of comparisons. They're also going to bring back the guys now who did not make the top 10 and uh, give them a chance to uh, be seen here uh, in Las Vegas. They may not be the best here, but a lot of these guys are the best in their country, and that says a lot. And they certainly deserve this opportunity to stand out there. As you said, these guys have worked as hard as anybody in this contest has. But hopefully next year they can be back here and they can actually make the top 10 and perform their routine. <laughs> told you it's trademark. Nobody does that better than him. They always say when you come to Vegas, you see things that you don't see anywhere else. <laughs> Thank you, Lucas. You gotta love the glue roll. All right, folks, we're gonna have our top 10 gentlemen on stage, please. It's not a given that just because All you're right, in the first call-out, you're going to be This is being judged live right now, folks. So be as loud as you want. Please welcome your head judge, Mr. Steve Weinberger. Thank you, Bob. Can we see Roly, Sean, Dexter, Rami, William, and Phil? That was predictable from last night's callouts, Dan. I mean, all these guys equally, I think, improved. The defending champion. Dexter and William, switch, please. Phil Heath. Dexter and William. Along with Big Rami, of course. Phil, I imagine they'll probably stand next to each Rami other in a minute. And Roly switch. And there it is, Dan. And the crowd understands what they're watching. Everybody in the bodybuilding universe wants to see Mamdu Alzbaye, Big Rami, stand next to Phil, the gift Heath, and see these guys go toe to toe and pose for pose. Gentlemen, quarter turn to the right. You're looking at two men on stage who have won the Mr. Olympia, Dexter Jackson, a former champion, Phil Heath, the reigning champion, and then there's Big Rami, a guy quarter who's trying to, to become right. champion. Yeah, I mean, he's thick as a brick. I mean, again, this takes me back to when I competed with Dorian Yates. It's, it's that apple and orange comparison. Turn to the right. but I can tell you, Dexter does not look 10 years older than Phil Heath in this comparison. Well, here it is. This is where the Big Rami fans will sit there and point out, I'd love it if these, uh, the camera could pan back over and uh, we can get a clear sense of that big Rami versus Philly. Front lat spread. Compared. And Dan, that front lat spread is big Rami all day. He's just too big for all the guys on that lineup for the front lat spread. Side chest. And again, Dan, there were some pictures circulating yesterday, this side chest where people thought that big Rami owned this pose when standing next to Phil Heath. Let's see how they look tonight. Well, both of them are making it a point to showcase their hamstrings. And um, we are, uh, it, it almost becomes murkier and murkier because Phil Heath obviously has a different look and it's extremely difficult to compare these guys, but Big Rami is massive and he's in the best back shape of his life. Seven. Winning the Olympia is one from the back. Lee Haney, Dorian Yates, Ronnie Coleman, and now the gift, Phil Heath, should own this pose from calf to traps. Relax. Uh, of course, William Bonac is the guy who's got something Rolling to say about and this William as well. Switch. And that's Dexter where they're bringing Sean William Bone closer to the action. They're going to give Sean a fair opportunity to stand next to the champion. Gentlemen, back lat spread. 
Steve Weinberger knows that there's a lot of money up for grabs, he properly Relax. prepared them. So Steve's going to let these guys switch back. Absolutely. Of course, Sean's got to get outside. He's just from the back. He, he, he didn't Gentle belong next tricep. to Phil Heath. The back double bicep is Phil Heath. And we're back to that side chest, which arguably is one of those poses that Big Rami wins. The side tricep, I think Phil Heath sneaks up Dominals on. Dominals and thighs. How does Big Rami win this contest? Walk us through this. It's got to be one of those situations where it's based on Favorite improvement. Rami is the best he's been. I cannot say the same thing about Phil Heath. Sean, I'm going to put you on the spot. Is Big Rami a better bodybuilder tonight than Phil Heath? There's a case that he's making right now, Dan, that I arguably would have absolutely no argument if he took the Relax. Sandow Trophy home. However, Phil those Rami, genetic line, strengths please. cannot be denied. The downside of being a dominant champion Front is, by, uh, is that they want you to sl close the door on your ch competition, and Phil has left that door open. This is a really good call out here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to, get, to get a sense for what William Bonac has become, um, it's nothing short of amazing. Sean Roden um, was given the opportunity earlier to move in to an inner spot, Space and front. Steve Weinberger looked at it, pushed the buck off to the side. Well, let me tell you something. Dexter wins it when he's standing next Gentlemen to William. But when you get down to that lower half, William's calves make Dexter look like an amateur. And this is where Sean falls behind Again, especially in the lower back department, but mostly the meaty, chunky Relax, middle back, around. along with Roly Winkler. The lower back is just not there. This pose down, of Sean, course, Dexter, William, and Roly back in a line. battle for third place. Who has the advantage right now? Gentlemen, quarter turn to the right. And this is how good this Olympia lineup is when you see guys like Josh Lenardowitz, quarter turn Cedric to the right, McMillan and Brandon Curry and Nathan. These guys that are in this call out right now. This is a this, uh, these are good bodybuilders well, here. And in this lineup, I'm going to go with uh, uh, Brandon Quarter Curry and Nathan right. Diasha in, these, in this comparison. And that says a lot because I believe Brandon Curry is taking out our reigning defending Arnold Classic champion Face from front. Ohio. Brandon won the Arnold Classic uh, championships. And in, in, uh, Nathan Diasha is one of the more improved. Obviously, I believe that Josh is a little spent. Uh, for all intents and purposes in terms of getting to this competition. But right now, Front I got spread. Brandon Curry in this for comparison. Line. Back double but I can tell you right now, these judges are not going to hand it to Phil Heath. He's not going to get this thing just because he is the defending champ. He's going to have to win this thing. Uh, but again, if Phil wins, Phil wins because he has a better total genetic structure and a better back. And that is half your body when we're talking the calves, the hamstrings, the glutes, the lower back, the middle back, the deltoids. He wins that from the rear. And thighs. But Phil, has, he has to know that he's in a dogfight. They are not comfortable. Muscular. I know he works with Hani Ramba, but right now I think he's probably a little bit nervous. And we're going to see that come out in the pose down. Phil is going to be fighting like an animal. He's going for history. So that means a Dexter, lot more William, than Ronnie just winning. Phil. History lasts forever. He's got six Olympia titles. He wants history. All right, this is where you're going to get a chance to see these guys really make their money, if I'm not mistaken, $400,000 up for grabs for the winner's check. It would have been nice to just see Phil and Big Rami, because that's really where the contest is. All right, I'm going to take you pose by pose, Sean Ray. These guys are going to start with the front double bicep. Phil Heath versus Big Rami for the 2017 Olympia. Let's take it shot for shot. Front double bicep. Who has the advantage? Right now, the advantage is front Phil when his stomach spread. is flexed. He's got to be flexed or it doesn't look right. Now they're going to move into the front lat spread. Phil Heath versus Big Rami. I'm going with Big Rami all day on the front lat spread. Just way too wide. Side you chest. can't ignore the sweeping quads. Now, a pose that has always really fared very well for Phil Heath is the side chest. Let's move in uh, to this comparison. How do you see this one? I'm staying with Big Rami on the side chest. I saw this a few times, and it is ridiculous in terms of the girth. Phil is hard through the pecs. He, he, he just doesn't have the girth, the width, and the meat, and the mass. He's competitive, but Big Rami wins that pose to me. Back double bicep. All right, the plot thickens. They are turned to the back as they do these poses. They will check themselves on the monitor. They're basically watching the same thing you guys are watching at home. They just have to look up a little bit higher to do it. Sean Ray, how does it look? And this is a maturity thing. I think Phil has him on the muscularity part. Again, in the lower part, this is where Big Rami, he had the hamstring injury before. The calves aren't necessarily all the way there. 
I think Phil has this post. Back lag spread. <laughs> Who gets this one? Big Rami all day. He's wide as a 747 jet. Watch those lats open up and basically make Phil look very narrow. I thought Side Rami is ridiculous, and Phil's got to look over there at Dexter Jackson, who's actually wider than him. Now we're going to go in to a side tricep shot. Again, another pose that has always been very favorable to the champ. Absolutely, and I just think Rami's hitting that shot wrong. Donald's he's not doing it right. This is where, I'm telling you, this is where Phil is dead serious. He thinks he's, he's kidding with Dexter, but this is about money right now in history. He's fighting for his paycheck. Just looking at the intensity in Big Rami's face as he hits that shot. He is here. He knows he has a chance. He Favorite can taste this muscular. thing. Phil Heath, though, is not going to go quietly. And quite frankly, from what I would guess, um, Phil Heath coming into this thing are really separating yes, themselves. Work, but Sean, based on your analysis, Big Rami has a whole lot of advantages. He certainly does, uh, Dan. And I got to tell you, Phil is getting more and more aggressive because he realizes the sand in the clock is ticking. And he's got to get that title. This is what he's here for. All right, thank you, Ben Steve. Folks, I hold my hand the results of the Mr. Olympia. Now we're going to move on to the Mr. Olympia. The main event, bringing up the top 10. Back here at the Orleans Arena for the moment that bodybuilding fans await all year round the crowning of a new Mr. Olympia. And we're going to find out who that's going to be, whether or not it is in fact a new Mr. Olympia, or whether Phil Heath is able to retain the title. We're going to learn that in just a moment. As Gentlemen, court turn to the right. Court turn to the right. Quarter turn to the right. Face front. Front double bicep. Well, this is going to be our final chance to get to see these guys compared. Phil Heath in the center on one side of him. Big Rami, Mom Duels Baye on the other side. The former Olympia champion of 2008, Dexter Jackson. William Bonac all the way off to the right side of your screen, and Sean Roden all the way off to the left side. These are the top five Relax. bodybuilders Rami in the world. And now what they're gonna do is they're gonna move Big Rami into the center. He is milking the crowd. The crowd is responding in a big way. During the William commercial break, switch. Bob Ciccarillo asked the audience who they thought was gonna win. He mentioned every Show single name. Time, and the name that got the biggest applause was Big Rami. People are really excited about the possibility that we could potentially see the crowning of a 14th Mr. Olympia tonight. This is extremely close, extremely difficult to call. Uh, Big Rami has done Back, the work and uh, he has brought something extremely dangerous. I don't know if he's gonna win tonight, he might, but I can tell you this right now, he's created a whole lot of intrigue as we begin the march to the 2018 Olympia. Dominoes and five. We knew Big Rami was special from the moment we first heard about him. His first couple outings at the Olympia were impressive. They were respectable, but we knew he had further that he needed to go. We knew that there was a piece of this puzzle that he hadn't found yet. Muscular. It appears that he has found it. And so now in the final moments of Olympia judging, their final chance to make their case, there's your 2008 Olympia champion, Dexter Jackson, Sean Ball Roden, last year's runner-up, Phil All Heath, right, Big Rami, William Bonac are gonna catch their music. breath. And it's now time for a pose down. There's only one man on that stage that has beaten your reigning six-time defending champion, and that is Dexter the Blade Jackson. Everyone else has been a bridesmaid along the way, and they've all taken turns beating each other in competitions around the world on the bodybuilding circuit. However, Phil Heath, when he ventured outside the United States, has done nothing but win. He won over in India at the Shuru Classic. 
won over in Spain at the Arnold Classic Europe, and he's focused since then only on the Mr. Olympia Championships. And in typical fashion, the champion is making his way to one side of the stage, and the contenders are chasing. And who knows when the day will come where they will start chasing Big Rami. I have a feeling it's not too far down the road. The question is, is that going to start tonight? Phil Heath is an impressive champion. He's trying to win his seventh standout trophy, something that has only been done by Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, and Lee Haney in the history of the Mr. Olympia contest. Big Rami is having a whole lot of fun here in Las Vegas tonight. He knows what's at stake. Uh, his contingency of, of supporters have followed him here, and uh, there's a whole lot of enthusiasm around the possibility that a new champion could be crowned. Um, seeing Sean Roden up there, it's also a credit to his ongoing consistency. He has been top five in the world for several years in a row right now. He'll try, and, and apparently he will stay there, or certainly he will have a spot in the top six, or in the top five, rather. But uh, for Phil Heath, the question is, did he do enough? Big Rami comes over. He asks permission to make his way out into the crowd. Um, or I guess they're not going to uh, authorize that permission. <laughs> or, uh, they, they, they seem to be on a different time constraint this year. Typically, they'll allow these guys out into the audience to bring the fans to their feet, to uh, take pictures with the fans during the post down. We're not going to see that tonight uh, for television considerations. Let me give you some perspective, Dan. Right now, these guys are physically egg exhausted. There's really very little gas to take. And now with this camera angle, you see the detail that, you, that, that Rami doesn't necessarily have in that muscularity shot that Phil actually is carrying. But this is when they're spent. They've been dieting in the anxiety and the dehydration. Uh, it is a very strenuous position to be in. They cannot wait to get this thing over. And, and I'm going to caution the fans out there, because I know there's fans of Big Rami that think he has this. The fans of Phil Heath thinks he has it. And you know what? On some level, you're both right, because you both have a good case for winning this thing. There isn't a right or a wrong answer on this thing. These guys are having a lot of fun. They all bring something very different. What Big Rami brings right, is not what Phil Heath much, brings, guys. but they are both, or in the right. case of Big Rami, he is at the top of his game. Phil Heath obviously has a genetic predisposition to deliver something that it's remarkable. We take the fifth place award, the check for $45,000 to your fifth place finisher, Sean Roden. All right, Sean Ray, there it is. Sean Roden is going to finish fifth place here at the 2017 Mr. Olympia, and one of the great bodybuilders on the planet. He fell just a little bit short. I know he wanted to bring something a little bit different, but it didn't quite play out for him this year. But once again, $45,000 fifth place check. You will take the fourth place award, the check for $55,000, and present it to the Blade, Dexter Jackson. Right, once again, Dexter Jackson remains among the world's very best and the fans respect it they appreciate it and dexter jackson i'm going to tell you right now he's going to be back again next year well there's nothing look at dexter jackson said unless he falls out of the top six he doesn't have a plan b this is his life's calling he's showing us his life's work it's not that he's off and it's not that he's old he is in the elite of the elite to your third place finisher william Bowman. William Bonac continues to climb the ladder, joins the very exclusive top three in the World Club, where he will be presented with an Olympia bronze medal, something I know you are very familiar with. Sean Ray, I think you have a few of those hanging in your office. I got three of them, Dan, and I got to tell you something. That is a heavy little weight that he's got around his neck, and it is an accomplishment in his career that he'll be able to and tell I'm his grandchildren because he is the number three bodybuilder, not just tonight, but in the world at his profession. That is a very good feeling to have. And now Back he's going to focus on second Robbie or first. He's got his work cut out. Please. On the line here tonight, folks, $400,000. The Sandow in the title of 2017 Mr. Olympia. Please welcome to the stage The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. that element to any audience. How's everybody doing, by the way? This is the 2017 Olympia. It could be a hist an historic night. I said, how is everybody doing tonight? So, to these two gentlemen, I want to tell you uh, fr from my heart and to 
the, uh, the athletes who competed tonight, men, women, all incredibly inspiring, incredible, the discipline has been incredible, it's all the things and qualities uh, that we love and admire and respect about you guys. So on behalf of myself, everyone in this room, and everyone around the world, I wanna thank you for inspiring us to create the best person we could be daily and always be the hardest workers in the room. I love you too, thank you, I appreciate that, thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the greatest bodybuilder on the planet, the recipient of the 2017 iconic Sandow Trophy, The seven time yeah. Mr. Olympia, Phil the Gift Heath. As spoken from the mouth of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, move over, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You've got company. Phil Heath is now a seven time winner of bodybuilding's most prestigious title. He is Mr. Olympia once again, one victory shy of the all time record. But for tonight, Phil Heath will celebrate. Number seven, alongside The Rock and the admiration of fans around the world. Big Rami, Mamdou Azbiye settles for second. It was a furious charge by the runner up. Big Rami deserves all the respect in the world. He is not finished yet. Big Rami will be back next year to battle for this title. But for now, the night belongs to Phil the Gift Heath. Jim Mannion presents the Sandow Trophy, bodybuilding's most coveted prize, along with a very big $400,000 check. Phil Heath from Colorado remains the best bodybuilder in the world. And Dan, again, he was pushed to the limits, rose to the occasion, and there's no doubt in my mind that this contest was won from the back. And that is Phil Heath's strength. If you don't take him out in his best poses, he is Mr. Olympia seven times. I didn't hear anybody boo, and uh, The Rock is taking it from here. Phil, congratulations. Uh, you have uh, you've done something very special. You've done something iconic. You've just made history. You have tied, you have tied the greatest bodybuilder of all time, Arnold Schwarzenegger's record at number seven. What's going through your mind? What's going through your heart? I'm just so thankful because when I started bodybuilding on October 8th, 2002, I had no idea that I would be standing on this stage one day winning the Mr. Olympia, let alone, you know, being seven time champion. When I got into this journey, you know, I was, you know, a little bit bitter because I didn't make it playing division one basketball and I was trying to find another outlet. And bodybuilding taught me how to be strong mentally, physically, and emotionally through all life's challenges. It taught me how, it taught me how to train hard when no one's in the room, when you're having a bad day, through death, through hardship, through anything that can go wrong. You, I always had the gym. I always had the gym over at arm breast. I could train. I could train any time of the day. There would be days I would train by myself or with my fiance, Sheree, and I would be in there dying. I'd be in there dying, looking at those pictures in the gym of Schwarzenegger, of Coleman, of Haney, of Dorian, of everybody. And I would just tell myself, one more set, one more rep, just give it everything you've got so you can put yourself in the best position to win. And that's all we can do in life, people. Sometimes life is gonna serve you up some curveballs, but I challenge each and every one of you to step in that batter's box and take a damn swing. And you look in the mirror and you ask yourself, do you give it your all? You look at the mirror and you ask yourself, do you have another rep? You ask yourself, can I go to work when I'm pissed off because I'm about to get fired or something bad happened or lost my girlfriend or whatever it is. 
You ask yourself, do you have the guts to go after it when no one is watching, no one's patting you on the back, and no one is liking your stuff on freaking social media? If you got the guts to go after it, you can put yourself in the best position to win, and that's what I did through this entire prep. It was not easy. A lot of people say, oh, Phil, he's got genetics and this and that. I put that God-given talent to work each and every damn day in the gym. And I'm just proud to be a seven-time Mr. Olympia. And like, the, and like the great Oak said, next year, I'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2017 Mr. Olympia, the king of bodybuilding, Bill the Gifty. Well, once again, Phil Keith Get a pose, Phil. is victorious against a very formidable lineup of international players. And Big Rami has absolutely nothing to hold his head about, down about. He is sniffing that title. And like Phil said, he'll be back. I'm sure Big Rami will. With Big Rami is William Bonek in third place. And of course, Dexter the Blade Jackson and Sean Roden, who's got some work to do. This lineup won't change too much next year. That trophy, as heavy as it is, probably feels light as a feather in Phil E's hand. It was the 53rd Olympia is in the record books. And seven-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Keith, is now poised to join Ronnie Coleman and Lee Haney for number eight next year. Thank you all from the good folks here at Amazon.com for tuning in. Sean Ray for Dan Solomon. Thank you for joining us at Amazon.com.